Last year the North Indian Ocean was uh, quite an interesting season certainly and it had a very big start in the form of Cyclone Mocha which was a very powerful storm that slammed into Myanmar. It's pretty much something that we managed to predict as well in last season's predictions. The rest of the prediction was hit and miss but as we expect with every prediction things go like that quite often but as always we are there for the big events when they happen and we did do comprehensive coverage on Cyclone Mocha. So what are we expecting this year? Will it be more of the same or something a little bit different? Uh, maybe the answer is both uh, because we are expecting maybe um, a fairly not that active but around an average season uh, but we are expecting a few interesting areas that could be affected this season. So we are expecting five, uh, six, sorry, six tropical cyclones this year in the uh, North Indian Ocean. And we expect, I mean, this is, once again is not very precise, it's just uh, uh, based on climatological projections and uh, modelling as to when we might see those storms but at the moment it's showing most likely that we will see one storm in May, two in June, one in September, one in October and one in November. Now of course in the North Indian Ocean we generally have two distinct seasonal uh, periods. The first one of course being just ahead of us right now late April into June, July and the second one being in October and November and sometimes uh, passing on into December as well. Well, here are the key messages then that we've managed to come up with for this season. And early season activity is expected to be very suppressed in the eastern part of the Bay of Bengal. It's looking like there's going to be a lot of dryness in that area coming over the next uh, month or two. So the main potential then is diverted further towards the west and that will obviously open up eastern India, probably along the whole coastline, really south of Kolkata, um, to be possibly affected by tropical cyclones in the early part of the season. And then uh, some signals suggesting that an early storm or two could also form in the Arabian Sea doesn't always happen. Some seasons it does, some seasons it obviously doesn't. Of course 2010 being banded about worldwide as a potential analogue, that season of course had uh, cyclone FET which was a powerful storm that impacted the Arabian Peninsula. So that Obviously something like that, worst case scenario, could be on the cards. But again in the late season the Arabian Sea could light up with more conducive conditions than usual extending further north. And that's really towards the coast of Pakistan and Iran for potential cyclone impacts. Not saying it will happen by any stretch, but higher chances than usual uh, for those areas that very rarely see tropical cyclone impacts. But they do happen once in a blue moon. A powerful storm could not be ruled out this season anywhere really, but most likely we'd see a powerful storm. If we got one, it would be in the, in the Bay of Bengal, um, and that can't re really rule out the Bangladesh region as well for a potential powerful storm, uh, as many analogues have things just like that, although in the early season it really doesn't look like we'll be seeing an impact over there, unless it's way up north, um, or I should say, uh, I was speaking more in terms of Myanmar there, way up north into Bangladesh and along the Ganges River Delta. Now then, um, the analogues for this season, the best ones, are actually the same as in the Western Pacific. It is 2016 and 2010. Now we've already mentioned what happened in 2010 and we had a few other storms that season as well. And then we have 2016, I can't remember any particularly strong storms that season at all, uh, but there were, I know, one or two cyclones. And a few other analogues that aren't quite as good but are still up there, including 2020, which of course had Cyclone Ampang, uh, which was a very powerful storm for the uh, coast, east northeast coast of India into West Bengal. Um, and of course many other seasons in the past as well that are on the list, including a few bad ones, 1966, uh, 1970 is there as well of course with the Bowler Cyclone and one other cyclone that season as well that also slammed that region that people forget about. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, let's look at the potential tracks for this season then. So certainly we could see storms that are forming near the Andaman Islands curving towards India at first and then maybe towards the northeast, towards Bangladesh and maybe very northern Myanmar. 
but looking more likely that we will see impacts along the eastern coast of India, certainly when we look at the percentage chances of significant cyclones. The main area that we're looking at right now is a 45% area around the Odisha region and around maybe into West Bengal as well, just about. And then we've got a secondary region as well at 30% down near Chennai along the east coast of India there, and uh, that could also see some uh, impacts, maybe. But there's a few, quite a few areas along the coast there, and pretty much anywhere along the east coast of India could be affected this season. Also noting one or two indications that maybe Sri Lanka might be involved this season as well. It's not very often that we do see storms in that area, but sometimes they can happen, and <clears throat> on the odd occasion, they can be relatively strong with hurricane force winds indeed. Uh, so certainly can't rule out the northern part of Sri Lanka being affected this season as well. Even the west coast of India has a few areas of 20% um, south of Mumbai, possibly even seeing some of that. And the Gujarat region also looking at potentially 20% as is the case for a small chunk of the coast of Oman, uh, which is actually very close to where Gonu struck, um, sorry, Fet struck in 2010, and Gonu is in that kind of area as well, now that we mention it, uh, but also that area, we could see something, maybe in the early season, more likely than in the late season for that region. So hopefully that tidies things up just a little bit there for the Indian Ocean, but certainly in terms of the next six weeks, it would appear that if we do get a May storm, not fully set in stone, it would form further west over the Bay of Bengal and would either move straight into India quite quickly and maybe without fuss, or it might turn north and then northeast and could even go as far east as Chattogram. That is a potential for May there, and when we get into June, July, August, it looks like things will get suppressed quite a bit, and then October, November, we might start to see, or maybe even September, a little bit more activity, and that could be in both base, sub-basins there in the Bay of Bengal and in the Arabian Sea. And one or two signals once again, which we'll want to look at again when we do our next review in about six weeks' time, uh, to see what the prediction is there for the coast of Iran and Pakistan, two rare areas that could be affected by tropical cyclones, but we can't really say that much for certain just yet. But those are our predictions. We're expecting six tropical cyclones this year in the North Indian Ocean.